very welcome back to Ireland AM. Now, guide dogs offer an invaluable service to people living with blindness, but just what does it take to go from a pup to a working dog? We're joined now by guide dog user Christina Kelly and puppy raiser Laura Murphy to learn more about the amazing work that they do and the guide dog raising process. So, Laura, you are a puppy raiser. You're not a trainer, you're no, a puppy raiser. No, a raiser. So, explain to us what that is. So, a raiser is a volunteer who takes one of these beautiful puppies into their house from about nine weeks old. And we keep them, look after them for about a year. So until they're about 12 to 14 months. And during that year with us, we, we introduce them to all sorts of social settings, get them used to public transport in a very calm and comfortable way at mm -hmm. the start and gradually increase the exposure during the year. So that by the time they come to going down to the centre in Cork where they're trained. Mm. They're very comfortable, they're very happy in all sorts of social settings, you know, pubs, restaurants, <coughs> bars, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Christina, yes. this is your beautiful dog, Effie. Yes. How long have you had Effie? I've had her four years. She's six, so you get them when they're about two. Hello. She heard her name. She heard <laughs> her name. You're going to sit good, girl. And as you can see, they have lots of personality. They do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sit down, please. Sorry, never worked okay. with children around. That is good so girls, okay. Um, yeah, so I've had her four years. She's six now. And what, has, what was the readjustment period like when you first got Effie? Um, so I suppose I got her in a very particular situation. Uh, apart from anything else, I got her just as COVID-19 had really kicked in. Mm -hmm. So um, what, how it works is you go to Cork for two or, two or three weeks, depending. So we were two weeks in the training centre in Cork. And then you come back up to your home, wherever you live, and the trainers come with you. And they go, they do all, they familiarise you with all of your, with, they familiarise the dog with all your roots that you already know. Mm. So you, all, the thing about the dog is you always have to know where you are going. Okay. The dog is not a GPS. The dog is a guide that facilitates you. Okay. So the adjustment, I suppose, for me was when you use a white stick, uh -huh. you are, detect, it's called an obstacle detector. So you are detecting obstacles. With the dog, they are avoiding things. So often you don't know if, when they're doing their job well, you don't really know what you're going around a lot of the time because they're just weaving and moving. Yes. And that for me was really, really powerful. I know it sounds like a very small thing, but it was a huge change I in how I, how I navigated the world. And, you know, it just um, and even, even simple things like suddenly being able to tell her to find a door, to find a seat. Christina, there's that a kind huge of level of trust mm. involved. Yes, right? massive, yeah. And I actually don't think I realised how much trust was involved until suddenly... I had this creature in front of me and I was following her down a road. I remember, um, just tell a really quick anecdote. I remember when I first got her, the trainer, we were going up towards my local shop and the trainer said, tell her to find the door. And I was like, I kind of seen her do it, but I hadn't really seen her in my own environment. So I said to her, you know, said her name, which I'm not going to say because she's now lying down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, don't, don't disturb the, the, don't wake the beast. Yeah. Um, so I said her name and I said, find the door. And she kind of pulled me towards the door. And that was when I realised, I was like, wow, this is really small, but really powerful. Yes, I can imagine. I can imagine. So before they get all the training and become mm. the amazing animal she is today, Laura, they're with you for up to 12 months. Yeah. How did you get into puppy raising and kind of what does it entail? How do you <coughs> socialise them? Yeah, so I started because <clears throat> my young daughter at the time was terrified of dogs. I don't know why, she just had an awful fear of dogs. And it was becoming a, a big issue for her, you know, anywhere we were, she was constantly on the lookout to see is there a dog. Mm. She was terrified. And I remember, I said to my husband, I'd love to get an end of a puppy to see mm. if we can get rid of this fear. And he said, you know, you can foster, or you can raise puppies for the guide dog. So that's why we looked mm. into it and we got our first puppy and we were just hooked mm. after that, yeah. So um, it took my daughter a few months to get over her fear of dogs still, but she did eventually. And um, yeah, we, we got our first dog and we all just fell in love with her. Laura, it takes two years to, to raise a dog. So what's involved in that process? Yeah, so as I was saying, they come to us when they're nine weeks old. So we very, very gradually and comfortably just start their basic obedience training. And as I said, we just start to get them used to all sorts of social settings. <coughs> we bring them into shops. <coughs> Um, we bring them on buses, we bring them on trains, we bring them on all sorts of things. And just throughout the year, we'll gradually increase how much we do with them and the length of time that we do it with them mm. to make sure that they're, they're comfortable and they're happy to do the work. Yeah. Um, 
so that when they go down to Cork, they are totally comfortable mm -hmm. and they're able to handle anything that they're faced with. And it's a huge cost. Is it true that it costs up to 53,000 yeah. euro on average yeah. to life. raise a guide dog? Yeah, well, that's for their training and, and working, working life. life. Yeah, okay. 53,000 for yeah. their life. Yeah, it's a huge amount. Um, Christina, yeah. bonding with the dog, I mean, how has Effie changed your life? Um, I mean, I think my biggest thing is, as I said, is confidence. I now I'm very lucky. I'm well able to, you know, I'm well able to walk up to people on the street and ask for help. I'm well able to talk. I'm very lucky. I'm not shy as a person. But I think the biggest change she's brought to me is that she's given me the confidence and the really the desire to go to new places on my own. And I, I did it previously because of course if you don't go to new places you'll never have any new experiences and you know that's how life works but now I want to go to new places I want to try new things I want to challenge us as a team and see what we can do together because that's the thing you're never on your own even if even though she's a dog you know you still have something with a brain beside you that's yes. doing some of the thinking of course like even simple things like if I pass somewhere that I think oh that might be a coffee shop it kind of smells like a coffee shop I think I'll get her to find a door and just see what's in here. Yes. Like my curiosity, I was, and I suppose I can do it. Like I, like I said, you have to have good, it's really important to understand that you have to have good, what's called orientation and mobility. So mm. you have to be able to get around on your own before you get the dog. The dog is not a GPS. They're not a map. Yes. They're not Google Maps. And you said there that you're a great team, but yes. it, it's a rigorous matching process, it is. isn't it? To it match is. you up with the right dog. Yes. I actually am um, in the, I got, so I got matched in December 19 with Effie, but in the previous October, I had been to Cork because they thought they might've had a dog for me, but it turned out the dog was a little bit too fast. Because if you think about it, if you're going to be walking with this dog every, nearly, well, most days and nearly six days out of seven, probably, mm. um, they have to, they, they look at you, they have to look at your gait. They have to look at your height. Of your weight, like your build, your walking pace, you have to go to a, you go to the doctor and they complete like a medical form, mm. you know, to, to in case you have underlying conditions or anything else. Um, so it's a really, because they want this partnership, you know, a lot goes into this in yes. terms of time and money. So they want this partnership, hopefully if it is successful to last, mm -hmm. I hope I'll have her for up to eight years working and then she retires. At 10. So, <laughs> she yes. retires at 10. Yes, she does. Happy yeah. Yeah. Um, she? Uh, Christina, there a lot of this work is actually this work is all voluntary. Yes. Um, explain to us how um, fundraising is so important to what you do, right? Well, it's huge. Obviously, it's a charity, mm -hmm. and eighty-five percent of the funding is done through fundraising. Yeah. So it's a huge amount of fundraising that's needed. I think it costs about five million Maybe. per year for the whole organisation mm. to run mm. and they produce, it's around 65 working dogs per year. So wow. it's a huge amount of money is needed, yeah. huge. How uh, we see how it helps people's lives. Yeah, you know? yeah. So what can the public do to support you? So at the moment, Maxall have launched these new um, car fresheners. They are available in all Maxall stores nationwide. There's 244 stores. And these are three euro each. And Maxall have very, very generously committed to cover the cost of six dogs right. over the next Isn't two years. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, yeah, huge, huge. So just a little air freshener. Yeah. Just a little air freshener yeah. for your car. Yeah, yeah, they're available, as you can see, in golden puppies and black puppies. And they're only three euro in all Maxall stores. Yeah. So uh, it's a huge commitment by, from Maxall. Yeah, it's amazing. It really is. Um, Great, guys, thank you so much for coming in. And I have to say, I'm not going to say her name, but she's been <laughs> the best girl, I think, on set. She really has. We'll say Effie, because she's beautiful. Uh, she, she is. She is. <laughs> no. Christina and Laura, thank you so much. Thank you very thank much, you very much thank for having you. us. Thank we you. really enjoyed our chat, and thank you uh, for coming in to us this morning. Now, stay with us, because we've got lettering broadcaster Brian Dobson, a.k.a. Dobbo, still to come after nine. See you then.